A good day to all of you and welcome to Scientific Python NumPy video number 2 or class number 2 and we seen some operations with NumPy and we are going to continue where we left from right in the last lecture right so we we left somewhere here okay let me delete this and this all right so now first things first import NumPy as NP And then uh, we created a matrix with ones, right? And uh, this is what we are, this is where we left last time. So you can create an empty uh, NumPy array, which is here three rows. So it's rows, and second is columns, right? Now we have to make sure that if you are using parentheses instead of square braces or internal square braces. So let me zoom in more for you. Okay. I think it's better if you are using internal parentheses it's going to give you the same right but now using these parentheses uh, is going to call a different function which is uh, you know get list right so it's going to call get function right and this is going to call uh, the list directly so it depends on you what you want even parenthesis is going to work because it calls another mm, uh, function uh, right right and if you want you can convert list to arrays and arrays to lists and we can have matrices right and we can have many many different things right if I say uh, let's say about we have uh, two arrays um, uh, matrix operation con continued right uh, so for example if I create e is equal to np dot mpt I am creating an mpt array you know, with five columns and three rows right and here I have to give these braces here I can give this as well and I can give these parentheses as well right so this creates an empty array right now you can see you are creating an empty array but you can see that by default the type of empty array created is float it is zero dot zero dot zero dot which type if, if I want to create uh, I say about an integer type uh, empty matrix or empty array of five rows and three columns for that I'll pass second argument here I will say D type which is data type is equal to np dot float 32 <coughs> I can take it to float 32 right and I'll get an error right here D type is equal to D TYPE is equal to FLOAT float 32 and you can see that this is how a float 32 bit number looks like it gives garbage because it's empty so it will have garbage but yeah by default you are having float 64 now you can see it's float 64 and now if I want int I can either have int 32 bit now you can see this is how your 32 bit int will look like with some garbage and you can make a plain blank pure integer type numpy array now you can see this is pure integer it has no dots no floating point representations all right then i hope you have understood this part uh, right floor 32 what else can we create so let me mark create a marker for you mm, i will say hash float we can have floor 32 int 32 right float 64 which is by default float 64 and we can either have float 32 bit all right all right uh, so by default it's float 64 and now i converted it to integer 64 and you can say it depends on you float 64 now you can see that it may have dotted decimal notations right mm, all right now uh, this thing is done Mm, and uh, what are yeah we can create indices and indices are very important right uh, in in arrays you'll come to know why do we create this you know if, if i if i tell you something about we have deep learning and deep learning we have neural networks and and these numpy arrays they help us in neural networks where we have to pass a neuron to another neuron and to another neuron right and we have uh, for example if you know that <coughs> cell inside a cell like human biology 
we have a cell and then inside then we have a cell and inside that we have another cell and then gene and another gene right so we can create an array and inside that another array and then another array then another array right so that's so on and so forth so that that's that's also possible all right and now for example if i tell you uh, about deep learning right wherein we take decisions for example i want to have something predicted here for example if i predict one and two and two right and now i pass it to another array and will say you predict also right some number let's say about it's just a random number now if this array predicts one two and two and here also we find one two and two uh, this means uh, the accuracy of uh, <coughs> our prediction uh, can be more valid right because both the neurons are having same numbers here and it's not only two neurons when once it's about uh, let's say about deep learning it's about neuron inside a neuron and the neuron inside a neuron so it's going to be like this right an array inside an array and then another array inside an array so it, it's it's going to be so on and so forth right so it's going to be like this and then it's going to be like this like this uh, right and 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 then we are going to have a complete big array inside this and it's going to be a matrix of arrays and there we have this uh, with the requirement of creating indices or creating matrices and and different different things right all right then uh, let's continue with the indices uh, so for, to create an indices i'll say ind is equal to numpy dot so we have this possibility of creating indices and i can say five comma three so i'm creating an indices of five rows and three columns so i can print those indices now you can see all right because it's not rows and columns sorry sorry it's not rows and it's values i want my indices to be of first indice to be of five now you can see zero one two three four because five is the maximum point it can go it's always going to be one point lesser and it's three that means we are going to have now indices here we are going to have result row wise and here we are going to have column wise which is zero one and two because maximum is three i can create five by five also now we are in we can see from from this side if you see uh you know row wise right first row second row uh third row fourth row, all will have the same number zero to five because maximum first indice is five and second indice can be like this right we can say column wise zero one two three four right zero one two three four and it's going to fill all the array with the same number so you can have 500 by 1500 this is how we work in deep learning right and then you can see those indices are going to look like this right and okay uh, so but yeah we're more interested in creating five only five by three indices and you can see those indices and there's another way of creating an indice right uh, let me show you that way also mm, no indices are good okay okay let me create uh, let me create identity matrix so let me have identity matrix all right I'll create a markdown here and I'll say okay so now I want an identity matrix and for that so I'll say identity one is equal to NP which is numpy dot I now this I is a function which creates an identity matrix and I say I want to create this identity matrix for five now <coughs> I can print identity one ID e n one right now you can see the identity matrix the first row is going to have one at the first uh, you know uh, place and then second third fourth and fifth so this is how your identity matrix is going to look like right now moving uh, the first column is moving one step ahead right it's just like a uh, right shift operator that is one shift then we have one more shift then we have one more shift then we have one more shift right and if I create 50, so you can see that identity matrix is going to go till 50 times. It's not going to show all, but yeah, it's happening. 
someone asked me that what is big data i said big data is something that you cannot see on the screen and this is this is the right example that something that we don't see and and that's 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 professionalism you know professionalism is handling things that we cannot see with our real eyes right and this is something that is required but you what what you got to do at this moment in time is to remember all the tricks and tips that i show you using numpy right so i'm going to wind it up in another video maybe it may take one more video right and and there's another way of creating an identity matrix so for example i say identity 2 is equal to numpy dot numpy dot identity and i will say 5 i want to create an identity matrix 5 but here i can give one more thing right if i here i can give the data type right and i can say numpy dot int because you can clearly see it has created uh, a float matrix right so the data type inside is floating point representation so it's float 64 i can say d type is equal on d type is equal to numpy dot int 64 and we get an error right here d t y p e now you can see we can do it here also now we are getting d type is equal to int 64 and this is also possible here and this is also possible here right so i can create it here so i'll say np dot int uh, i'll say d type is equal to np dot int 64 so now iden 2 is going to show me the same thing right so we can create an identity matrix by using i or we can create an identity matrix by using identity that is the uh, you know uh, method of numpy right numpy dot identity can be used to to define every single thing right i hope you've understood now we have a lens space right and lens space is a very great thing right it's the best thing for example if i say x is equal to np dot len space and what what is the lens space that you want i say for example if i say i want to go uh, let's say about i want to go from minus 10 right to 3 now what is the lin space going to be and now if i say if i divide it in equal uh, proportions i'll say right if i start with minus 10 then i'll have minus 9 <coughs> then i'll have minus 8 then i'll have minus 7 minus 6 minus 5 minus 4 minus 3 right uh, and minus 2 and then I will have minus 1, right? And then I'll have minus or 0. Then I will have 1, right? I'll have 2. Then I'll have 3. Now, this is going to be uh, the lint space. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now, if I say np.lint space, right? Start with minus 10. And you go till three right and how many do uh, how many lin spaces you want to divide it to right what was ours right i forgot one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and i'll say i want it to be divided by 14 lin spaces now if i say now you can say minus 10 minus 9 minus 8 minus 7 minus 6 minus 5 minus 4 right then we have oh, we didn't have zero <laughs> So we are having uh, minus zero was not there, my mistake. All right, then we have zero, one, two, three. Now what if I don't want this? So I'll say I want from minus 10 to plus 10. That is 14, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I'll use 21 here. Now you can clearly see that 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now I can use the same. Maybe I can supply D type is equal to numpy dot int sixty four. Now you can see this ten nine eight seven six five four three two, and then we have zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. 
Now, what if I want to go from minus 10 to plus 10, but not 21? I need 201 length spaces. Now you can say it's being divided into 201. Now that is the magic here. Minus 10, minus 9, minus 9. But we have to use float 60 for here. And then you'll see the actual thing. Now see, the actual thing which is happening, we start with minus 10 and then minus 9.9, 9.8, 9.7, 9.6, 9.5, 9.4. .9 so the lens space has covered it. And we can see that actual division is... <clears throat> 201 so this is also a very good matrix that we can use uh, to deal with different different problems in numpy right because that's what we have to do in numpy deal in arrays deal in bigger data structures larger data structures query data structures fill data structures and whatnot all right so i suppose you have understood it right and the second thing for example if i want to draw a plot I want to draw a sine curve plot of the same now, matrix which is happening here. So I can say import the library used for plotting is matplotlib. So I'll say matplotlib dot py plot as uh, let's call this plot as plt, right? So now we have imported it, and now I will say hey plt, which is the alias for matplotlib.py plot. You mind if you plot, you mind if you pl plot my x on, uh, let's say about um, x, take this x, uh, for example, I'll say uh, my sign is going to be my sign uh, plot, so I will use, now I can say sign sign or lin space. Sign has thou this lin space, so I will target. I'll use on x axis, keep x axis, and use sign. Now you can clearly see it's going straight from minus 10 uh, to, to, to plus 10. Now it starts from minus 10 and goes till plus 10. Now, what if I want to do the division of, uh, let's say, about uh, I want to start with minus and go till, uh, you know, uh, let's say about plus 10 right uh, let me do it some other way I will say NP or uh, let me call this here now lin space is already there maybe sign is or let me keep X here let's not call this sign let's call this X and let's print X now this is my X and I will use X here right and X is here Right, fine. Uh, so let me use, uh, I will say, x1 is equal to a numpy. I already shown you a range. Numpy dot a range, right? And you start with minus 10. You start with minus 10, right? And go to 10.05. Right and take zero one at the same time. Mm -hmm. What is the error? Zero point one. Sorry. Now, if I say x one, you can see the matrix from minus one to plus ten. Right. Mm, right. You can even supply the data type is equal to float sixty. Four, or we can say for data type we have to say uh, d type is equal to mp dot numpy dot float 64 and I can choose which is by default float 64 now I can use the plot here now you can clearly see starting from my I need a u plot here now starting from minus going to plus now if I go to x1 and I say you are doing you are going 0.1 at the same time like minus 10 and then 0.1 is the what do you call that uh, is the hop or we can say is the lint space that you are filling it with right uh, so that is 0.1 right you can say minus it minus 9.0 9 you're moving 0.1 at the one uh, at, at, at a time once per step you're moving 0. 
one. So now I need the chart of that matplotlib. I will say, hey, PLT, if you could plot for me, all right, will you mind if you plot for me, uh, uh, let's say about uh, X, on X axis, tick X1, so I can take it. But yeah, you can see it has it has not given you the sine curve. I will say I need a sine curve for first, right? I will say sine is equal to the sine curve, right? It is going to give you the sine curve. Mm, I will say np dot sine of the same x1 or x. You can take both. Now, if I say sine, right? Now you can see it has given you a sine curve. All right, 5.44. You'll see that a sign you can see in, in uh, using by using this plot. So I will use instead of x1 now, I will use sign. Now you can clearly see a sign curve, right? And you can see how how it is happening. Right, first 5.0, then say minus 7.5, then 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 you do this. Now, now if you don't want, so in case if you don't want this sign curve, if you want a chord, right, you can clearly see. <coughs> For example, I am having X, so I'll tell you this, I don't want that, so I'll say X, what is X? X is having this length space and X1 is having also the uh, length space, so I don't mind doing that, so I'll say chord, I need a quadratic equation for that, so I'll say QUAD chord, uh, right, I name it, this is chord 1, right, it's equal to quadrant or we can say quadrant 1 here. I have x, right, multiply x with 2 or x power of 2, right, plus 2.0 plus 5.0, something like that. So if I say QUAD called 1, and then you can see uh, that what you have done to x, right, you can clearly see that what you have done to x, 107. Let me plot this and then you'll see that clearly. Right, I don't want a sine wave. Okay, let me go ahead and say chord one and see what do we get. Now you can clearly see a curve. You start with 100, which is minus 10 right here. You start with minus 10, which is going to be 100 something, <coughs> minus 100 something, and then you move to, uh, you know, move to uh, that plus 100 something right here. Alright, so this is what is happening. So if I say I need to see the QUA quadrant, quad 1, <clears throat> now you start with 107 and you go till 107 from here, right? So 107 point nothing, alright? And then you go to 105.01.04. So you're going in a reverse order here. 16, 25, 36. And then finally you get to 105 and 107. You can see you started with 107. Slowly, slowly you go back to 107. But you fall. While going back to 107, you fall. And this zero is your mean. All right? where they match, right? And this is how you can plot, right? Uh, and if I don't give this chord, and if I don't give this sign, uh, if I would plot on the basis of a range, uh, right? And for example, I have this here, my x, you can clearly see moving from minus 10, and this is the hop that you are taking, 5, then 2.5, right? Mm, all right, so you'll see plotting uh, again, but yeah, it's best to know the overview of what is happening right here. I had to do this, right? Because why are you doing this? Chord 1, if I just say chord 1 is taking x, chord 1 is taking, I suppose, x. Now, if I print out x, now you can see x has 10, it has 9.9, 9.8. It is also, you know, but it, it does not take any curve. It is a straight line, all right? It does not take any curve. It's completely a straight line for me, all right? Uh, so now if I want to give a curve right here, so that's why I will say x, right, times 2 plus 2.0, 2 
all right plus 5.0 now if i do this and now you can clearly see if i say x only multiplied by 2 and i say q u a d called 1 now you can say what you have done here you have given x power of 2 so now you can see the minus has been converted to plus right here now if i go and make a curve of that now you can see the curve has just fallen down now why are we doing this you can you can even do x power of 1 all right uh, so that you no know, power of 1 does not convert negative values to positive so let me see yeah now it's straight line here now i'll convert my negative values to positive first right it has converted the negative values to positive and now you can see the curve uh, right here from negative side to the positive side so you can see from here you are moving mm, 100 and then you drop and this is the mean here right so this is what mean where all the matches you know where negative and positive is matching or where you know this is this basically or we can say the last time we learned this uh, right standard deviation right okay mm, all right and i told you many things in the last class as well right standard deviation me measures the spread of data from the mean and this is the mean spread of data from mean towards positive spread of data towards mean towards negative and this is the curve and you can see how we can change data to maintain the curve so this is the sine curve here right uh, which is happening from 5.0 you go to 7 and then you go up you go down you go up you go down you go up all right uh, so this is what we do i know that even if you're understanding 50 60 percent is quite well unless you do it practically with the live data you'll not be able to understand but 60 percent will suffice if you understand 60 percent mm, i suppose that is pretty good right okay let me go back to more basics now right we have seen we have a list for example a is equal unto one two three four all right and i can say five it's a list it's not an array and right? i can say b is equal unto 10 11 12 13 14 and i can say a plus b one two three four five now you can see and then it takes 10 11 12 13 it doesn't make two here plus doesn't make a multi-dimensional it, it does not make b another dimension no by no ways all right it does not make it right and i can say a multiplied by b still it's going to give you no no multiply sequence non int of type less yeah you cannot multiply because they are having more values it should have identical so i will say five six seven and now i can say this no uh, sequence of one two three four five seven one two three four five okay i am having only five fifteen sixteen maybe no it's not able to multiply them why what happened 10 11 12 13 14 <laughs> plus is happening uh, and uh, multiply should happen all right and why isn't it happening then huh? what is it can't multiply sequence by non int type of list okay 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 mm, for that we may have to convert it to an array uh, right it is going to be mm, yeah we have to convert it to uh, uh you know python uh, for the uh, numpy array we have not done it but yeah we have to make sure okay let me see some other things first right all right uh, so now another thing that i want you guys to know is uh the following for example uh we have an array all right so i will say n1 is equal to np dot array and this has for example 10 2 3 4 and 11 all right and this has this all right uh, so i can go n1 and i get 10 2 3 so that's absolutely fine now is uh, a numpy array immutable or mutable it is completely mutable we know that it is mutable right i can say n1 right a zeroth position which is 10 is equal to 1 now you can see that 10 has been replaced by 
one you clearly see the 10 has been replaced by but now if I do something like this if I say n1 right second or we can say first position which is this two right I want this to take right uh, let's say about 6.6 .6. now what is going to happen here is decimal proportion or we can say decimal pro uh, decimal portion of the value here the decimal portion of the value here is 0 0.6 so you will see that decimal decimal portion of the value here is truncated right why because there's a strong constraint that all data uh, must have or must be of the same type right here so that is the constraint here so you cannot replace it with this right so for example if I say n1 uh, now because which is this 2 should be replaced with 6.6 I'll say okay and then I say n1 now you can say it's not replaced by 6.6 .6. the decimal portion is truncated right and it's only replaced by 6 so that is that is uh, the the constraint that we are having that the data must be of the same type that we are editing uh, right or that we are doing so can we create an array with different data types so now we can that's a that, that's a different question right I can say n2 is equal to an array which is 10.5 2.5 right and then we can say n2 right and now you can say yes at the time of creation it is possible but if you are editing I will say n2 is equal to 11 point sorry n0 which is this 10.5 is equal to 11.5 so it is absolutely fine now if I print now you can see 11.5 because it already had decimal while editing it is very important that we supply the appropriate type now if I say mm, uh, let's say about 3 4 11 now it has it has converted all now what a single data type by giving a single data type right here 10.5 2.53 is not float now it's converted to float 4 is not float and now we know that a numpy array can either be int or it can either be float it cannot have integer and float values right because it is going to cause problems in divisions multiplications and different different uh, things right so that you are already aware of uh, so let me create a markdown right here all right so let me insert cell below so I'll create a markdown so I will say right we can say write numpy array has a strong has a strong constraint right that all the data must be of the same type right same type so now what is an example of that so an example of that is either it can be float or it can be int right so I'll create a markdown of this so that you can understand it okay what is this markdown okay it's it's a strong markdown so how I uh, let me not use this uh, right here all right so now number is a strong constraint that all the data must be of the same type either float or and, and if you create the exam you may in exam you may get same questions now they are trying to edit one but you'll have to see the element that you're going to edit uh, if, if, if the array is float it can be edited now for example can, if I want to change n1 which is 2.5 I'll say hey I want to change you to 2 will I be able to do that let me see right I have been able to change that right I can clearly see not n1 sorry n2 but you can see that it's going to be 2.0 now right now 11.5 remains 11.5 I wanted to change it to 2 but it has become 2.0 point means it's 2.0 obviously and now if I print n2.2 you are going to get 30123 right but in actually it's a floating point representation value right here fine uh, so there's a constraint regarding this right mm, and uh, what else can I show you is uh, yeah we can do an addition 
uh, right and we can say for example um, let me say a is equal to np dot array right and we'll say uh, f is equal to numpy dot array right and I can supply array either with these braces or parentheses I'll say 11 and then we have 2 then we have 3 then we have 4 and I can carry on 1.2 one is integer and another is float now though that's a constraint here so I'm trying to deal with 2.3 right and we have 4.5 and we have 5.6 so now we have created two arrays let me print a and also print f okay let me just get rid of this a and f fine so you can see this is a a is 11 2 3 and 4 and f is 1.2 now can i do this can i do can i do a plus f now you can see it has converted integer to float right it has not converted uh, the output is not integer because a has been added to f which is float no right because integer when once we add an integer uh, type numpy array with the uh, boolean type numpy array the result will be in boolean right so you can clearly see 1.2 plus 11 is equal to 12.2 2.3 plus 2 is equal to 4.3 and so on and so forth right and uh, can we do this yeah now we can do multiplication as I said now you can see multiplication is happening now a into 2 is 22 4 6 and 8 and multiplication now here is giving a different result now you can see uh, multiplication has not taken uh, the floating point and the answer is given in pure int right you can see uh, a plus F and then A, what is A? A is 11, right? And F is 1. So 11 into, it is taken like this, 11, 2. And 2 into 2, 4. Skip this portion uh, right here. Now you can clearly see 4 into 2. So it has taken, because it's 4.5, it's taken 2. So it's taken 4, right? Now that is, this is this. And we have multiplication now. If I add two plain uh, numbers, for example, if I say a is equal to numpy array, which is something, uh, yeah, that's understood. Basically, that is understood. So, if I use this again to multiply, for example, I have eleven. I have two, three, four. 5 so I will just go ahead I'll say a into f now we can see the result right here right uh, so 11 into 2 22 right 3 into 2 6 4 into 3 12 right 5 into 4 20 right so that is that is where we try and do uh, now can what can I do a divided by 5 here yeah, that's also possible. You can divide each and every element is automatically divided, right? So this is this is the magic, right? So can I do vectorization, right? Vectorization means uh, I vectorization means that I need a loop because you know that these kind of processes that we are doing in uh, in actual term <coughs> in actual programming language, you know that we require something known as looping. And once we are doing it, that's the magic of NumPy here. Once I teach NumPy, I tell you, hey, forget loops. We don't really require loops. Right. In, uh, you must be aware of uh, those, uh, uh, you know, what we call list, uh, you know, uh, lists and other dictionaries in Python, uh, right? Uh, so they do not also use those loops. So now once we are looping through, it means vectorization is happening without loops. Vectorization means without loops here. So now I can do the same here. I can say take entire F, which is this array, and give it power of A right now i can give power of a now you can see power of a given here given here three into three right three into two right you can say three power of two is nine and the data type resulted in in 32 so now that is the magic here vector of uh, vectorization and let us move to array broadcasting now so let me take a look at time so that i can move forward okay all right we have around 15 minutes remaining so we can continue Right, uh, so let's see NumPy. 
uh, I can say num pi right uh, where function right has two distinct uses so I'll mark it down for you so that uh, yeah you can find the same file as PDF down in the description section download it right and practice and one is to provide coordinates right uh, from masks right so let me continue with array broadcast here how do you broadcast an array all right so let us see where function in numpy i'll say a is equal to np which is numpy dot a range i want to create an array which is going to have a range from minus two to two and i'll give it a power of two as well a r r a a range r a n g e i misspelled it so i'll say a now you can see 4101 one data type is equal to 2. That is, that is absolutely 3. Now can I do mask? For example, I want to create, uh, I want to get numbers which are div divisible by 2 or di which, which are uh, not divisible by 2. For example, I can create a mask of that. I can say mask is equal to A modulus. Modulus is the remainder. So wherever you find the remainder is equal to is equal to zero. For example, four multiplied by two. Two two multiplied by two is equal to four. The remainder is a zero, right? Uh, so that is the case. If I now go with, I need to print out the mask. Now you can get true and false. And uh, now this is divisible by two, which is true right and second one is not divisible by two which is false third one is which is two zero zero it doesn't return and fourth one is false so this is called as masking here so this is uh, actually basically the where clause uh, that we are using where here right and uh, we can also say uh, coordinates are returned as a tuple of arrays for one of each axis if i do the following all right because you can see that the coordinates by mask are returned as a tuple you can see this parenthesis is going to return a tuple inside tuple we are having a list and second one is np dot where now this is the query command mask i'll say where mask right now you can say that where mask is only zero and two that means the mask has already been created now i say where mask i need to get where mask where means uh, the place where mask is true not false right it is true where mask is true or we can say is equal to is equal to false that is also going to happen right uh, but yeah in case i in my case i need true now false mask mask is false at one and three places one and three uh, sorry zero and zero one two three uh, zero one and three is false zero and two is true so if i say where mask is true zero and two you can clearly see four is divisible and zero is divisible all right so now it is clear that how do we use mask here so that's why numpy where function has two distinct uses one is to provide coordinates from the mask now either true or false or you can get the element by using np dot where clause right so that's actually very important right for example i can have positive so positive so i can say positives uh, is equal to np dot a range right so i can store np dot a range for and positive so now you can say zero one two three four i can have now uh, negatives now i will say negatives is equal to um, minus of positives okay so i can say minus negatives my minus positives right and i can go and see 
what is in negatives now? It is 0, minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3. And positives has 0, 1, 2 and 3, so on and so forth. All right, now if I want to use where clause, hmm, I will mark it down for you here. So I'll say that where can also be used to, to construct where can also be used to construct a new array right by by uh, by choosing values right from other arrays of same shape it's important all right so this is very important right so i'll create a markdown here Right. So, we can also be used to construct a new array by having same. So, it is important that the shape of positives, sorry, not a function. So, the shape of positives should equal, should be equivalent to the shape of negatives. Or, whenever you are creating an array, I can say for, uh, so it is going to be, uh, one column right and four rows uh, sorry uh, four uh, four columns and no rows or zero rows the first one only mm, all right so we can use np dot where now you can do the mask is already created the mask is divisible by two right uh, so I can use mask all right I need to get the mask right and there are two values which are positives and I'll supply positives and I will supply negative. So this is where we are creating a new array. So I'll say new is equal to. Now you can see if I go with new, you can see 0, 1, minus 1 and then 2 and minus 3 is given, right? Because uh, 4 is divisible right there. So what we have done, we have created a new array. All right so we can say scalar values right or from scalar values that can be useful for recording arrays right we can say np or we can say np dot mask or let us use np dot where mask is 0 and 1 so that's also possible you can say mask is 0 and 1 all right so 0 and 1 all right uh, that's where we can supply uh, these uh, these also right and we can use np dot where mask is divisible by 2 mask if you do not remember what is mask is this a divided by 2 that is 4 1 0 1 and now I can go here and say np dot where uh, let's say about mask is positives right and 0 so you are going with both array 0 0 2 0 right uh, so that's what we can uh, actually do here uh, right uh, and we can use np for example I want to use np dot where we clearly say a is equal to equal to a dot max now what is a let me print a first 4101 1, and then I say it where a is equal to max and where is a max that is 4 now you can say a is max at the position 0 and now you can query okay I'll now give me then a 0 that is the maximum which is 4 right and this is where we can uh, use a is equal to is equal to we can directly use a dot max now give a a dot max now max is only here that means max is true at place 0 which is again for the maximum value right uh, so that's that's what we can do or we can do np dot where right um, give me only where a is greater than 0 that means we are skipping 0 now right a is greater than uh, 0 at 0th position uh, which is uh, for the first position and the third position 0 is skipped right or we can say greater than 3 so now 0 only one place which is greater than 
this is what we do while doing data analytics while we try and fetch we do some we do we do many many different things right uh, okay and let me take a look at timings again uh, right so I'll show you a few more things uh, right regarding the axis oh, now um, let me carry on um, uh, with 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 uh, with a multi-dimensional array to query a multi-dimensional array right uh, so a uh, is equivalent to um, I'll write it here we always prefer numpy right functions we have some numpy functions uh, right to built-ins when working with array so let me create a markdown right uh, so what is prepper I don't know prefer right or uh, we should prefer numpy functions to built-ins uh, when working with arrays like I will say a is equal to NP right so dot array now we are creating a multi dimensional array so now this is first dimension this is the second dimension let's say 2 and 3 and 0 and 1 it is created I'll say give me a 2 3 0 and 1 we are getting right so can you give me np dot minimum of a now this is built in zero the minimum of a is zero can you give me np dot max of a sorry of a and the maximum is three you can clearly see these are called uh, buildings right and how can I do minimum and maximum via axes for example for example I t I need a dot max but I need it on axis zero where axis is equal to a zero now you can print a right the max on x is zero is two three zero and <coughs> one right you can see this uh, sorry we are doing wrong so now max on x is zero is two and three so x is zero is row wise sorry column wise so it is this column wise line and the row wise line is going to be a dot max on x is one that is going to be two and one three and one all right you can see the max here on x is one is three and one so this is where we can use uh, some uh, x is wise uh, right and we can use uh, right mm, let's use a dot a r g argument max so I can use a dot arg max now you can see that we are getting oh let me first print a right here so this is an array a then I say arg max right so you can say that you are having one and if I say arg minimum that way you are going to have Two, right minimum two and maximum or one so many tasks like optimization are interested in the location of the min max right not uh, we can say um, uh, anything else now if I pass an argument to this right so I will say np dot arg min it's one and the same thing if I pass a we are getting the same if I instead of that say a dot argument we are going to get the same all right all right so uh, it is basically to flatten ID locations all right and 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 I'll show you just give me a moment all right we have some time so now what is this arg max and arc main doing all right so I would like to document it here I will create insert a cell blow all right so it is arc max and arc min 
returns the indices okay returns the indices of the minimum values along an axis minimum or we can write minimum dash maximum values along an axis so I will create a markdown of this right and now I'll say enter now you can see uh, that what are the maximum indices right maximum uh, let me first go ahead and see what is a right for example to check what is a okay a is 2 3 and what are the maximum indices here or, or we can say argmax the max is basically mm, 1 now there is no max here there is no max here all right because and now if you say maximum indices occurrences all right uh, along an axis the axis here is having one max and here we are having two minimum that's what we are getting arg max is giving one max along an axis and arg min is giving two minimum maximum is only one you can clearly see uh, right uh, here which is uh, which is where is a okay along an axis we can say that it is having uh, one maximum all right you can see this here okay and uh, two minimums are clearly here along and proper what if I give an axis right here right uh, can it take axes so that we know what is happening mm. okay uh, let me try this a dot argmax I need the maximum arguments, please, but yeah, you mind if you give me, um, okay, let me see a dot shape, right, so that is 2 and 2, you can clearly see that when shape is 2, 2 columns and 2 rows, now we have, where is a, we have only 1. We can see two and three we have one max and we have two minimums here so that's absolutely understood right mm, so that we don't have to take care of right we know that right so there's no problem the maximum for example if I do a dot max right so you can see three right but along the axis the max is only a arg min that is along an axis uh, right and if I do a dot minimum you can see along an axis minimum is zero right but once I do change the axis so I say total I need to get the maximum and minimum right let me take a look at timings again all right so we have some time left uh, so or we can do something like this I can do NP uh, dot unravel index I want to see an argument a dot arg max along right and I want to see the shape I want to see both arg max and a dot shape as well mm. unravel I and I index sorry so now you can see that you are having uh, the shape wise 0 and 1 right here right because uh, numpy uh, includes a function to uh, unflatten ID locations now we are unflattening the ID locations now we had um, for example if I want to see I want it over a specific axis right I can say NP dot arg min uh, I want to get uh, the minimum right of a uh, along axis 0 now you can see on axis 0 1 and 1 and now you can see here right axis 0 has um, 1 and 1 and now if I go and say the same on axis 1 we'll get 0 and uh, 0 so now if I check like this horizontally so I should get 1 and 1 is 2 and 0 and 0 
All right, so if I do it like this, so it's going to be one and two. It's going to check, uh, you know, the indices, the multiple occurrences. In short, it's checking the multiple occurrences of minimum and it's checking the multiple occurrences of maximum. Argmax checks the multiple occurrences of, occurrences of maximum and uh, minimum checks the multiple occurrences of uh, the min max. Right, so this is called min max. And we have also seen the masking, uh, we've seen the wear, right? So, didn't we? And many, many different things, uh, right? So, let me see what else can we do uh, today so that we can carry on, right? I'll give you the task in the next uh, you know, lecture wherein we'll do some data analytics of a data set without pandas, only numpy. We'll use only numpy uh, so that we get, uh, you know, used to numpy functions and every single thing, right? Mm, all right. Another function uh, that I want to show you is numpy fill. Uh, so, for example, if I say a, I will say a dot fill, right? So, I can say minus 4.8. So, now I can use a dot fill and then you can see uh, that what has happened, it has filled uh, minus 2 because it's not going to take point because uh, the initial data type is integer, it's not going to take, so point 0.8 will be truncated and it's going to fill the array with 2. So this is also going to happen, all right, uh, by using a dot fill, all right, and, 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 and shape and size is also there. If I can do a dot size, now I can check um, uh, the size of an array, which is 4, 2, you can see, 4 cells, right, it's a square array. Right, and if you want to check the uh, dimension, I'll say a dot n dim. Right, so you can say it has two, right, zero, or we can say one and two. Mm, and I can check, uh, okay, we have checked the n dimension, right? Dimension one is column wise, and dimension zero is. Uh, row wise here so that we also know indices is also done mm, all right so slicing so i'll show you some uh, more ways of slicing so i'll say s l i c slice in num pi arrays now how do you do slicing in numpy array so i'll create a markdown right here so slicing in numpy arrays. So for example, if I say a is equal to numpy dot array and we will have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, so let me have this. So this is sufficient. And we have an error because we are not using square braces or another brace. All right. Okay. Now because uh, nb dot array is a function and you have to pass arrays right here. All right. Either you can call an inbuilt function, which is get. For that, you have to use double braces. So that's one and the same thing, right? But yeah, calling is different, right? So this is an array right here. So I can say, hey, I want a from one to three. So I'll get a from a one uh, to three. Now one is eleven and three is this. So this is what we can do. We can do uh, something like this. So minus and plus. So I can say, I want my array to give me from 1 to minus 2 so minus 1 is uh, this minus 2 is 15 minus 1 is always 6 minus is going to be the end, end element of the array minus 1 is always if I say minus 1 minus 1 is 16 here all right so now you can say 1 I want to go from 1 0 is kept I want to go from 1 which is 11 till minus 2 which is 15 so 15 is the maximum so it's going to show less than that so this is the result is right this is minus 2 and this is 0 skipped, 11, 12, 13, 14 will be the result. And we are getting 11, 12, 13, and 14. And we can say, A, I want to get minus 4 to 3. So you are going only one value here. Right, so minus 4 and 3. So do we have minus 4? Yeah, we do have. Okay, why are we getting this here? A, A, minus 4 and 3, what is minus 4? 1, 2, 3, 4. 
and 3, 1, 2, 3. Now we're not going to get anything like this. I'll say minus 1. Okay, let if I say minus 4, so it is going to be 13. Yeah, oh, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is 13. Okay, uh, and I want to get minus 4 and all. Yeah, you're getting now. Right after minus four, you're getting all. Right, you're going, you're, you're getting it in a reverse order, right, right here. Mm, right, and you can say I want to get a and colon, and this is basically how do you pronounce it? Colon, colon. Okay, uh, so we're getting it 10, 11, 12. Right, 10, 11, 12. So we're going to get from zero to three. Now that's also called. Uh, it's it's a better way to slice your array, and I can say. A, I want to go till um, 2, right? Uh, so I can go, right? You can clearly see, and right? So that you are taking from left side, you are taking 2, right? Every other element, right? So you see every other element. So you're not getting 11, you're getting 12. You're not getting 13, you're getting 14. You're not getting 15, you're getting 16. So I'll mark it down here. So every other element right uh, so this is your skipping one one is by default so you have to if, if you say one you're going to get everything 10 11 12 now you say i need every other element so you'll get 10 you'll not get 11 equal 12 so so on and so forth right mm, so this is every uh, element so now uh, grab last two elements for example i will say grab the first three elements here so i'll say grab first three elements right and we will say grab all except last four right so it works like and this right so if i say a minus two so it is going to be grab the last two elements of an array so this is how it works actually right Mm, and if you have a multi-dimensional array, right, okay, what happened? It's A, right. For example, if you have a multi-dimensional array like this, I'll say A is equal to, mm, or you have a single dimension array, you can go ahead and do that as well. So that slicing is actually possible. Mm, what else can we do? Yeah, we can repeat it in multi-dimensional array, so that is also possible, right? Mm, shape size dimensions is done slicing is done mm. okay we can see that we can see one more video and in, in the next video we'll try and focus more on creating matrices and creating uh, uh, you know a nice visualizations right so we'll target more on visualizations how to create different waves sine wave tick wave and minus plus and how to create uh, different different things uh, like a matrix or maybe we have that uh, a sine wave right how to create that and how to create that identity matrix uh, right and and you know standard deviation uh, visualization of standard deviation in a heat map or using a heat map and different things i hope uh, it has cleared all the basics today uh, so i'll attach this do find the PDF of this file, uh, the same lecture, down in the description section and also in the first comment, right? And if you want any help, you can let me know down in the comment section, right? Until then, I wish you all the best. See you in the next lecture after one day. So, I'll give you another lecture after 24 hours. Do practice this very well and wish, wish you all the best. Bye-bye. Take care.